Zen Archer is probably one of the coolest names <laughs> for a song ever. Just want to say that. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin and today we're listening to the song Zen Archer by Todd Rundgren uh, off of his album. Uh, was it? Oh, I thought I had it up. It wasn't up yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, off of his album A Wizard, A True Star uh, released in 1973. Uh, you guys have obviously uh, been recommending Todd Rundgren to me and I've listened to just a little bit of him. I was about to listen to Utopia today but I saw that this song popped up quite a bit in the comments, so I figured, you know what? Let's give it a listen. Let's give it a taste. Let's give it a little sample. I would also like to recommend you guys uh, not only a song, but an album. You know, every once in a while, I don't know if you guys know, but I do listen to music outside of the channel <laughs> and, and, and like discover and look for new music to listen to. The album name is Taichi no Yume. Uh, it's a Japanese album and a Japanese artist whose name is Yoshiko Sai. It's kind of like Japanese jazz pop with flamenco, maybe a little bit of like progressive elements, like just slightly, maybe in the ideas. I'll put a link down to the album below. Give it the first like two or three songs and see what you think. If you like what you hear, keep going. If you don't, that's okay. I just like to recommend you guys stuff uh, that, that I'm listening to. <laughs> you guys can join me on Twitter. You guys can join me in the comments down below. I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Let's do it. This is Zen Archer by Todd Rundgren.
that was immense. <laughs> Man, you guys do know what you're talking about, huh? <laughs> that was a... I feel like I don't even know where the time went on that song. That was a perfect mix between Soul with his vocals, with the overall, like, there's a, there's a certain feel in the music that really had this soul uh, vibe. And I would, I would like to say that that's probably in the vocals, really. Um, but then it also goes into this kind of psychedelic feel, um, especially as it moves on into this ending part of the song that just keeps on going on. But even, I, don't, I wouldn't say that it's like a traditional psychedelic rock kind of sound, but it's kind of like psychedelic soul, right? Because with that part, with, with the, the, the vocals that just continue to carry on, these beautiful vocal lines, and this really dense and thick atmosphere that does not let up, the sound effects that kind of weave themselves in and out, I don't know, they, they, kind, of, they kind of come in, and then they kind of come out, like, and it sounds like they're just kind of moving through your mind. But regardless, I liked it. I really like the way that the song opens because it sounds like an accordion kind of sound, so it gives you a certain idea. And then that idea carries forward. Okay, vocally, like I said, that's soul. I really enjoyed Todd's vocals ever since I first heard him, uh, but here, even more so. Like, you guys, remember I asked you, like, okay, what else does he do? And you guys pointed me here? I, that's what I needed. This is what I needed. Okay, so his vocals, beautiful melodic lines to just like sing over this music, which is beautiful. I love that accordion-like sound that continues through because to me, I think accordion, I'm thinking kind of like, I don't know, old time fair kind of grounds or something like that. And then I like how the instrumentation actually lends itself to that carnival circus kind of idea. I really like the drum pattern, by the way. Uh, the drum is paid, played by John Siomos. Uh, I really like the pattern that he comes up with because it allows a lot of room while still maintaining a beat. It's not carried forward by like a continuing hi-hats or something like that, which is fine and which is typical, but I like how he doesn't do that. He just plays really with uh, kind of the bass and the snare and just kind of coming up with beats on that. And of course the toms as well, adding that really big pounding sound uh, throughout the song. Mm -hmm. You get a little bit of keyboards in the back as well, kind of aligning itself uh, with that atmosphere along with like that accordion sound. Like that is just a really solid groove and I really enjoy the way that Todd sings throughout it. I don't know why I did this, <laughs> but that's how I hear his voice. The whole sound too, it sounds like a song, obviously, but it sounds like a song that's just a little slowed down, right? Like, you know, like when you're in a dream and you're trying to run, but like you're not really moving. This song sounds like that just a little bit. It's a little hypnotic, which is why it gets uh, into the psychedelic aspect of it. But it's, it sounds like a little bit drugged, a little bit lackadaisical. It sounds just a little bit dragged out. But I like that. It allows all this space and atmosphere to be created within the song that is actually very unique, I would feel. Mm. And the way these vocals just wash in here, the harmonies, a little bit of a rise on, this, on the uh, keyboards in the back as well before jumping right back into here and the drums start to really take over from that moment forward uh, back into the verse. That's where I feel like they're very strong. And then he says a dark figure steps out from out of the shadows and once again the music changes right here. Listen to that bass. And we get a high pitched sound in the back that I'm not 100% sure what it is. It almost sounds like whistling or just like super high and piercing vocals. I'm not sure what it is. But the way that all this is set up, all of the splashes going on on the hi-hats and the cymbals, or on the cymbals rather, <laughs> not really the hi-hats, but it just feels like this fluttery and flowery moment in the song that like it just begins to bloom and it begins to open up. And then it of course leads into this section uh, that just continues for the rest of the duration. And this saxophone, that just grows out of nowhere. It just, I did not expect it, first of all, which, you know, it's a first listen. I don't really expect many things. <laughs> but as far as I can tell, the saxophone was not in any other part of the song, except right there in the solo. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. But it just, it's literally like having a nice cup of coffee and you put a little sugar and cream in there. Okay, the saxophone was the sugar and cream in this song. And the song was bold before, it has a strong taste. It's a great taste, especially in the morning. But when the saxophone comes in, 
uh, that that really just added a whole new uh, a whole new tone to the song. Uh, looks like it was either played by Michael Brecker or David Sanborn. I'm not 100% sure which one played on this specific track, but regardless, it was fantastically integrated and done. And once again, those vocals that are just in the back, like beautiful waves of color just washing in and out throughout the song. And I think actually that's part of what I enjoy about this song so much. Obviously the sound part, okay? Like, I like how this sounds. But also the drifting and the movement within the song. Kind of what I was getting to before with how it just kind of moves almost slightly slowed down. This song actually moves to me in perfect waves, kind of the ebb and flow, like moving in and out. And I think that kind of helps you or helps me to kind of get lost and kind of cast a drift uh, in this sea particularly. The guitar as well just begins to kind of wail and scream in the back and just just warping its way from here to there and all the music is just kind of going and I don't know that part it's dense it there's a lot going on and it's almost chaotic but I feel like it's a melodic chaotic. The lyrics Zen Archer <laughs> Pretty bird with feathers falling, pretty as a lady calling for her pink and midnight lover as she stares into the water. And the yellow moon is rising and there can't be no disguising that the pretty bird is dying. With the silver arrow lying at its side, rivers of blood, oceans of tears, life without death and death without reason. So I guess the, uh, the question as far as I can tell is first to identify characters. Who is the bird and who's the archer that shot the bird? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. But at the end of the first verse, it does say to the whole United Nations, to your greatest expectations, to the moment that you realize as a dark figure slips out from the shadow. A Zen archer, someone who, you know, does archery, but is also at peace with themselves. So they're probably at peace with what they're doing, even though archery in a sense, and, you know, especially shooting a bird is going to be a somewhat violent sport. You know, you're killing an innocent bird. It says a pretty bird. And maybe the bird is like innocence because near the end of the second verse uh, says to the promise kept and broken to the love that's never spoken just as surely as i'm in your ears a dark figure slips out from the shadow so it's like love that was unspoken not able to to give love the, the, in his, uh, uh, i have no idea <laughs> at this point i'm just rambling and i don't think i'm getting it right away but regardless i enjoyed the song <laughs> Please let me know what you think of the song. You can join me on Twitter. Uh, definitely let me down. No, don't let me down, but let me know down in the comments down below. I uh, hope that you're having a fantastic day. Thank you so much for the recommendation, by the way. This, you guys know your stuff. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.